hope you have enjoyed your week here with us at the Range Cattle Research and Education Center for this year's Virtual Youth Field Day. Today's presentation is titled Reproduction Deconstruction. My name is Liz Palmer and I will be starting this presentation, but I will later be joined by Sonia Crawford and Taylor Davis. This is a brief outline of the topics that we will be discussing today. First, we will be highlighting the importance of reproduction, particularly to Florida cattle producers. We will also be talking about different management practices that affect reproduction. Then we'll be looking at the different components of the reproductive system, as well as the timing events in the reproductive cycle. And then we'll be concluding this presentation with a live deconstruction. It is important to have knowledge in all of these areas so we can better understand reproduction and understand problems that are associated with reproduction. Therefore, we can improve our reproductive efficiency on our cattle operations. Florida's cattle industry is primarily cow-calf. At the end of the day, our primary goal as cow-calf producers is to provide a wholesome and nutritious product for you and your family. Cow-calf producers hope to wean a calf every year from every cow and heifer that was exposed to a breeding program. Reproduction therefore impacts livestock production and through that it can impact the meat, milk, and fiber production of the beef industry. Reproduction occurs in an order of events. It is important to understand these order of events to have a successful reproductive program. Typically, you need to consider the time of heat or estrus and then ovulation to understand when you're going to breed your cows or your heifers. Cow-calf producers should also consider whether they would like to use artificial insemination, which typically also includes an estrus synchronization program prior to breeding, or if they would like to use natural breeding. That concludes my portion of this presentation. Next, you will be hearing from Ms. Crawford, who will be talking about the reproductive system, the timing of the reproductive reproduction cycle, and we'll be um, looking at the structure of the reproductive system. Before reproduction may be achieved, some of the basics must be considered, such as proper nutrition, genetics, and health. Proper nutrition is important for breeding, rebreeding, as well as fetal development. This may be assessed using the body condition score on your cows, which is based on a scale one to nine. One being very thin and nine very obese. Body condition score of five is optimal for cows and six for heifers. The establishment of a health management program is important for the well-being of the animal and to minimize death losses. Visit with your local veterinarian to develop a plan that fits your herd. Genetics is also important in reproductive management. Genetic traits are equally shared by the heifer or the cow and the bull. Proper selection of herd replacements will assist in minimizing reproductive problems. You must select for sound and fertile bulls if natural breeding. This may be achieved by understanding expected progeny differences, also known as EPDs. If artificial inseminating, one will select from desired traits, such as utilizing the EPDs. It is also important to cull non-breeding cows. Heifers and cows may be managed differently. Breed heifers 21 days earlier than the rest of the cow herd. The cow's reproductive tract is located in the pelvic and abdominal cavity. Thorough knowledge of structures of female reproductive system is essential for successful palpation. You will hear these terms again in the deconstruction process presented by Ms. Davis. Some of these terms are vulva, which is external opening or entrance. The vagina is the birth canal and semen deposit area. The cervix is the gateway. The uterus has the body and two horns and it houses the fetus. 
it's the oviducts or the tubes where conception occurs. And ovaries are referred to as the female sex cells. Fertility is important to get the female to breed for the first time and to carry the calf all the way through gestation to birth. Uh, the calf is approximately 283 days or nine months, which is the same as your mom. The length of the estrus cycle is 21 days, with the window of time for the cow or heifer to become pregnant is 14 to 18 hours, referred to as the length of heat. Ovulation is 30 hours after heat begins, which is the egg is released from the ovary. After the birth of the calf, the postpartum time is approximately 40 days plus, which is the time the cow or the heifer may rebreed. The live deconstruction will be presented by Ms. Davis. Basic knowledge in this area will help you to do a better job of getting the cow or the heifer pregnant, especially when using artificial insemination. It will also enable you to do a better job and control reproductive diseases and calving problems. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Davis. Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Davis, and like Sonia said, I am the livestock agent for Highlands County. Now we're going to talk about the anatomy and the structures of the female reproductive tract. So we're going to start our way working from the outside inward. So our first structure, you might actually be able to see it looking, just looking at a cow. It's called the vulva. And the vulva provides extra protection to the vagina. And he, you also might notice that it becomes swollen and has a red coloration to it. Our next structure we're going to dis discuss is called the vestibule. This is a common duct for urine and fe in the fetus. You also might notice this big sac over to the side. This is known as the bladder. Coming back to the reproductive tract, we're going to discuss the vagina. And the vagina is located between the bladder and the cervix, so this area to prevent bacterial growth. It has a 5.7 pH. Our next structure is known as the fornix vagina. And it is at the entry point of the cervix right here. This at the fornix vagina is the site of semen deposit during natural mating. It also secretes mucus during estrus. Our next structure is called the cervix. This is also known as a landmark when manually palpating because it feels very different than any other structure in the reproductive tract. It's very sphincter-like, so in other words, it, it feels very similar to a chicken neck. It produces mucus during estrus, and it is sealed right here during pregnancy to prevent any pathogens from entering the and harming the developing fetus. It also serves as a birth canal during parturition. A lot of times, when you're checking cows, you might notice just from looking at a cow from the outside that it has some mucus coming out of her vulva, the area where she urinates. This is a sign that the cow or the heifer is in heat and that mucus is coming from the fornix vagina and the cervix. Our next structure we're going to discuss 
it's two parts in one, is the uterine body, which is this area, but we also have two uterine horns. These are bicornate, meaning that there are two. And these structures make up the uterus. This is where semen is deposited during artificially inseminating. So when you are AIing, you will take your rod and manipulate it through the cervix. And at the very end of the cervix, in the uterine body, is where you deposit the semen. The function of the uterus is for embryo development and attachment of the embryo. Our next structures, there are two of them, and they are called the oviducts. And I'll have to show you them, you kind of have to dig for them. So remember we discussed the uterine horns, this is the ovary, I will discuss that in a minute. But then if you pull it apart, you'll be able to find the oviduct, which is a long tubular structure. The oviduct is also known as fallopian tubes, and each reproductive tract has two. It connects the uterine horns to the ovaries. It transports the sperm and the oocyte through smooth muscle contractions. So when the ovary releases an oocyte, it manipulates it through the oviduct into the uterine horn. Our next structure also has two of them in each reproductive tract. These are known as the ovaries. The ovaries are actually controlled by two hormones that are produced in your brain from the pituitary gland. These hormones are follicle stimulating hormone, also known as FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, also known as LH. These ovaries have many functions during their lifespan. These produce their own hormones known as estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is a hormone that regulates the estrus cycle. And progesterone prepares the uterus for pregnancy. While pregnant, it maintains the pregnancy in the uterine body. These ovaries are also in charge of gamete production. They develop, mature, and ovulate oocytes, also known as eggs. Now we're going to do a dissection. Here is my scalpel, and I'm going to cut from the vagina all the way through the cervix, specifically to show you the cervix and the folds within them. It gets real tough around the cervix. There are multiple layers that we have to cut through. So you can start to see the cervix popping through. And you can see all the different folds we're coming into. So when you're AIing a cow or a heifer, it can be tricky because not every cervix is the same. Some of them have lumps, some of them are bent, some of them have very tricky folds you have to move your rod through.
So you can see kind of the difference in texture between the vagina and the cervix. This is the entryway into the cervix right here. You can see how it, it's originally a hole. And when AIing, you have to work through these crevices. See how it, if it was together and then you pulled it apart, all these different folds. Now cutting into the uterine body, you can see it's a different texture here as well as compared to the cervix. The baby can develop within the uterus, so that can be in the uterine body or within a uterine horn. A lot of times if it's in the uterine horn, the horn just expands and it kind of falls into the uterine body. So when getting these two reproductive tracts, I noticed one of them looked very odd. That reproductive tract had previously been pregnant but whenever I received the tract, it was cut from the cervix upward. So I received all the bottom half of the tract, but not the uterus or the uterine body, ovaries or oviduct. Let me show you. So you can see the tract has been cut off at the cervix, right here. And it looks very strange with all of these big pods in them. What could these be? Well, these are actually very unique. These are what we call a caruncle. You only see these on a bred cow or a bred heifer. These develop when the amniotic sac, which holds the fetus inside the uterus, is attached to the side. So the, this is part of the amniotic sac from the bred cow or heifer. And you see these very unique, about quarter sized structures across it. These are known as a cotyledon. Now the importance of these two structures is that the amniotic sac is attached to the side of the uterus through these structures. When put together, it is very similar to Velcro. They are intertwined. And once they are intertwined in a normal pregnancy, together they are called a placentome.